How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to talk to you about what effect coffee has on our brains. Now I know a lot of us drink coffee on a daily basis, including me, so I guess it's kind of important to know what's actually going on inside our heads. Hopefully this stuff isn't too complex and I'm going to simplify it as much as I can. Enjoy the video. So I'm just going to start off here with drawing what looks like a pretty crummy coffee cup, but just take that as the symbol of coffee throughout the video. Apologies for the bad artwork. So basically this video is again a brief overview on what coffee is doing to our brains. My little stick man here, we're going to circle his head and we're going to zoom into there right now. So within our brain we have things called receptors. Now there are many different types of receptors, but today we're going to focus on ones called the adenosine receptors. As you can see here, I'm drawing them. So adenosine is a chemical which occurs naturally throughout our brain. I'm going to use a little circle to resemble it here. Now adenosine is the only sort of chemical in the brain that is allowed to bind to its receptor. It has a certain structure that only the receptor will recognize. So as adenosine binds to its receptor, as we can see, it's an almost perfect fit. It causes an effect in the brain. Now, this usually occurs to cause us to feel tired. Um, it causes us to feel a lack of energy and basically overall sleepiness. So I'll just illustrate that with a little cartoon figure of how our body or how, how our brain basically changes from when adenosine binds to its receptors. As you can see, we get sleepier. <laughs> now let's go back to my uh, pretty crummy symbol of a coffee, uh, but basically we need to represent coffee now as a chemical within our body. So let's draw that as a square. So we all know caffeine, which is the square, as the power chemical or the power drug. It basically makes us feel energized. It makes us feel like we can take on the world. Now the interesting thing about caffeine is that it's similar in its structure to adenosine, which therefore means it can bind to adenosine's receptor. Caffeine is a sneaky chemical in the way that it competes with adenosine and actually wins most of the time. Therefore, once caffeine hits the brain, it competitively blocks the adenosine receptor. Now by blocking the receptor, it literally stops adenosine from working. So therefore, the opposite effects are seen. Basically, we're no longer tired and we actually feel more energized throughout the day. Now my little cartoon figure here will represent that, with the guy feeling pretty good about himself after having the coffee. Actually, I don't really know what's going on with those eyes, but yeah, he's, he's feeling pretty energized. So now let's look at what most of us would consider a little more important, um, being what happens to our brain when we frequently have coffee. Now there are a lot of people out there which think frequently having a coffee does nothing to our brains, but sadly they're wrong. It definitely does something to our brain, so let's look at what that is. So let's draw that uh, receptor layout again with my little receptor objects here. Yep, and then I'm going to draw another crummy little uh, coffee symbol just to represent we're having a coffee right now. Now caffeine is all the way blocking the receptors. Uh, it's having a good time just sitting there, adenosine sitting around doing absolutely nothing, feeling pretty miserable about itself. But what the body does is it actually starts to sprout out new adenosine receptors. It realizes that its own chemical is actually not getting to perform its own task. So it therefore provides it with more receptors to act on. Mm. 
Now importantly, this means that we're going to have a heap of adenosine receptors throughout our brain and therefore when there's no caffeine to block them, there's going to be a heap of adenosine to activate them, therefore making adenosine's effects a lot worse than what they usually were. So as you can see here, that was before we started having caffeine frequently and now after, there are a lot of adenosine receptors lying about, ready to be activated and ready to make us really, really tired. It's an alarming situation as you can see. So I'll just go over a few points now about how to avoid that buildup of caffeine tolerance in our brain. So the first thing to do, and I guess the most important thing to do, is to ensure that you have caffeine free time or caffeine free periods. Basically, going a couple days without having a coffee every now and then to allow our brain to readjust itself and get back to normal. And the second point here is to not go overboard with coffee. Keep your intake at a stable rate. Now the third point here we all need to follow and that's basically not worrying about it too much. Don't overthink yourself, don't fret too much about when you're having a coffee and when you're not having a coffee because in that sort of sense we're just going to trick our brain into making us feel like we're caffeine dependent. In my opinion, coffee is absolutely great. It has a world of health benefits, it improves our cognitive ability, our long-term memory, and our ability to process information quickly. To finish off, I'm just going to draw a little cartoon version of me enjoying an excellent cup of coffee. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, maybe I shouldn't be drawing cartoons anymore. That is very shocking. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Hope to see you guys next time.